Welcome to this presentation of Crossroads this evening. My name is Alrisa and um, I greet you here from Jadniel. Before we start, let's just bow our heads in prayer. Father, thank you that we can gather around your word. Thank you that despite all the um, boundaries and things that are put in place to keep us apart, we can still gather around your word and your spirit in our hearts unite us. And we thank you for this. I ask that you will come through the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will lead me this evening with the presentation and this teaching that needs to go out. I ask that the Holy Spirit in each believer's heart will put a teachable spirit in their hearts to receive the message tonight, that they will learn from this teaching, from your word, that our lives can be changed and that we can grow um, together to become more like you, Christ. And, and bless this evening, bless this presentation. And we thank you, Father, that we have this privilege to share from your word in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight's topic will we will be discussing power and authority. We have divided into two and um, tonight we will be focusing on power. So although servanthood is the basic principle biblical model of leadership, even church leadership cannot avoid the need for the use of power and for structures of authority and submission. Unfortunately, we live in an age in which all use of power or authority is usually questioned. We learn from an early age to be skeptical of those in authority. We soon realize that there is widespread abuse of power both in and out of the church. Nevertheless, we cannot avoid the fact that leadership is necessary and leadership requires the exercise of power and authority. In this lesson, we are going to examine the interrelated concepts of power, authority, and submission. Power and authority have often been abused. Therefore, it is imperative that we understand the biblical principles for the use of power and authority, both, both so that we will not abuse our followers and so that we will not be abused by our leaders. So the first slide we can see we will be looking at power and authority. So firstly, it's power and authority. Secondly, power. Thirdly, authority. And fourthly, submission. So let's look at power and authority. Since leadership is all about influence, power bases are best understood as the means leaders use to influence followers towards God's purpose. In the context of church leadership, both power and authority are forms of power. Although there is a large degree of overlap between them, for the sake of analysis, it will be helpful to distinguish between power and authority. Firstly, power bases are best understood as the means leaders use to influence followers towards God's purpose. Secondly, power is the ability to do something. We can call this personal power. Thirdly, authority is the right to do something. We can call this positional power. Imagine a scene in which a massive truck is bearing down upon a traffic officer at great speed. The officer stands in the middle of the road and raises his hand to signal that the truck should stop. In this scene, the truck driver has power while the traffic officer has authority. The traffic officer does not have the physical ability to stop the truck, but he does have the legal right to stop it. 
He has power not because of his ability, but because of his position. His authority must be honored because it is backed up by a greater power, the power of the state. So once again, the definition of power is the ability to do something. A leader's power is his ability to get something done. This is based on his personality, that is, on his ability to inspire others to work with or for him. A leader has the power over his followers when his character and competence inspires them to trust him. They are motivated to serve by love, both his love for them and their love for him. And the definition of authority, authority is the right to do something. So a leader's authority is his right to get something done. This is based on his position, that is, on his right to require others to work with or for him. A leader has authority over his followers when his God-given position allows him to require them to obey him. They are motivated to serve him by duty, that is, by the fact that they recognize that God has placed him in authority over them. So just let's look at the differences between power and authority. Power is the ability to do something based on personality, inspires trust, and is motivated by love. Then on the other hand, authority, the right to do something based on position, requires obedience, and is motivated by duty. The foregoing discussion probably gives the impression that power is positive and authority is negative, but this is necessarily not the case. When correctly exercised, both power and authority are positive means of influencing God's people towards His destiny for them. In fact, power and authority usually go together. In the biblical model of the church leadership, power comes first. God gives a believer the ability to perform a particular ministry or task. The church recognizes His gifting, which is power, and appoints him to that ministry, which is authority. Once the leader is given the responsibility for a ministry, he must also receive the authority to carry out the duties that accompany that responsibility. So let's look at biblical principles of power. John Kirkpatrick outlines five principles concerning the use of spiritual power that every Christian leader needs to understand if he is to exercise his power in a God-honoring way. So the principles of power. Firstly, God is the source of all spiritual power. Secondly, God chooses those on whom he will bestow power. Thirdly, God defends his leaders. Fourthly, spiritual leaders are only a channel of spiritual power. And fifthly, spiritual power benefits followers. So firstly, God is the source of all spiritual power. Kirkpatrick emphasizes the need for leaders to recognize that their power to do God's work comes from the throne of God rather than from their own natural abilities or gifts. There is a great danger for highly gifted people, so-called charismatic leaders, to fall into the trap of believing their power comes from within themselves rather than from God. If we recognize God as the source of our power, we will realize that He reserves the right to increase, limit, or remove our power. Secondly, God chooses those upon whom to bestow power. Spiritual authority is not something one chooses to exercise. God chooses both those upon whom He bestows this power and also the degree of power that He entrusts to each one. Let's read Acts 20, verse 28. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Thirdly, God defends his leaders. If God grants spiritual power to us, and we exercise it faithfully, we do not have to vindicate ourselves. Moses was a reluctant leader who exercised his authority with great humility, yet he had to endure much opposition to his power. 
On two occasions, God spectacularly defends Moses from the hostility of those who resented his authority. And that can be read in Numbers 12 and 16. Then we'll look at spiritual leaders are only a channel of spiritual power. If we believe our power is our own to use, we are likely to abuse it. God gives us power for the purpose of advancing his kingdom. If we use it for any other purpose, our power is illegitimate and God will either remove his power from us or remove us from ministry. You can reference Psalm 51 verse 11. And then spiritual power benefits followers. Spiritual, spiritual power is never given for the personal advantage of the leader. God grants leaders spiritual authority for the benefit of his people. This is why we should never give authority to somebody who wants authority, only to somebody who wants responsibility. Servant leaders use their power to help their followers. God took David from obscurity to lead his people because David had their interest at heart. Let's read Psalm 78 verse 70 to 72. He chose David his servant and took him from the sheep's pens. From training the sheep, he took him to be the shepherd of his people, Jacob of Israel, his inheritance. And David shepherded them with integrity of heart, with skillful hands, he led them. What are the forms of spiritual power that God has given to leaders to influence his people towards his purpose? What qualities inspire others to invite us to exercise power over them? That is to follow us. The application of power. There is power in the Holy Spirit. There is power in love. There is power in prayer. There is power in passion. There is power in example. And there is power in knowledge. There is power in the Holy Spirit. People follow gifted men whose lives show that the Spirit's power is at work in and through them. Even those involved in menial leadership roles need to be spirit-filled men. When the apostles appointed deacons, they gave his in this instruction. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to him, to them. This can be seen in Acts 6 verse 3. Then there is power in love. Love is the greatest source of power. People willingly embrace the input of those whom they know sincerely love them. If your people know that you are for them, they will let you speak into their lives and direct their paths. If you are willing to lay your life down for others, sacrificing your time, energy and money for their well-being and placing their needs first, they will follow you anywhere. Thirdly, there is power in prayer. People follow men who are intimate with the Lord. Not only does prayer change others, but prayer changes us. Our people can sense whether or not we have been in the presence of God. Even the unsaved can sense this. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. This can be seen in Acts 4 verse 13. Then there is power in passion. Passionate enthusiasm is contagious. People follow those who are passionate about the things of God. You are convincing to the extent that you are convinced. If you are not excited about serving God, you will not convince anyone else to serve Him. There is power in example. There is power in integrity. People will follow those who practice what they preach. They want to see whether or not we believe our message deeply enough to base our own lives on it. They also want to see how it works for us. That is why Paul exhorted um, his followers saying, Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Seen in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. There is power in knowledge. Knowledge is power. 
This is usually called expert power. People invite the input of those who know what they are talking about. An ignorant, an ignorant leader is a dangerous man. The Bible says it is not good to have zeal without knowledge, nor to be hasty and miss the way. This is Proverbs 19 verse 2. Passion is influential, but if it is not guided by knowledge, it influences towards destruction. Be wary of ignorance on fire. Only the people who know their God will be strong and carry out great exploits. This is in Daniel 11 verse 32. So this concludes our session for tonight. And tomorrow night we will be continuing with biblical principles of authority. I would like to close in prayer. Father, thank you for this teaching that um, we could receive this evening. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that will let the seed of power and authority, this teaching that it will grow in our hearts. The Holy Spirit convicts us on places where we might not be submissive towards those that are in power and authority positions above us. And Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit will work this submissiveness, this humility in our hearts, especially towards our leaders that have been placed um, over us and above us. Lord, thank you for your protection over our loved ones this evening. Thank you for your provision over each one of us, Lord, that we are healthy. We, we honor your name and we thank you for that. Look after each one in this evening that we can gather tomorrow night um, around your word, Lord, and that your Holy Spirit will prepare our hearts for the teaching that you would like um, to go out tomorrow evening. Bless the teams that are working behind the scenes, putting all of this together. Um, strengthen them, Lord, and we thank you for them and we bless them in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this evening. We honor you. We love you. Amen. Have a blessed evening and we will see each other tomorrow night.